Let's put another tool in your thinking toolbox. This tool is called the rule of implication. And the rule of implication is really simple. All it says is, given that one thing is true, what else would also have to, by logical necessity, also be true? What would follow from this one thing being true? And we're going to apply the rule of implication to our questions about physicalism and the nature of reality. So, so here's the question. What if the physicalists are right? What if it's the case that the only thing reality includes are physical things, material things? Reality has not and will not and cannot include non-physical, non-material things like minds or souls or spirits or psyches. Okay, so what if the physicalists are right? So if they're right, if physicalism is true, there's some questions that should come up for us. One would be, what exactly is a thought? Right? So if the only thing that exists is a brain and a thought is an experience that occurs in the brain, what exactly is the nature of that thing we're calling a thought? So I can think right now about the dinner that I had last night and I can visualize it in my mind. I can picture on the plate this uh, piece of salmon with some pesto on it, on a bed of rice, with some green beans sitting along the side. I can visually um, conjure up that image in my mind and I'm having an experience of this event that occurred in my life. Um, and it was a physical event. But the experience that I'm having right now, it doesn't feel like it's a physical event. It feels like it's a mental event or a mental state. It's something that's occurring um, in, my, in my mind, in my consciousness. But if the physicalists are right, what exactly is that thought that I'm having? So you can see, you know, here's a brain and here's a person with a brain. And according to the physicalist, this brain is the only thing that exists. It exists in this person's mind in some form. It exists here. It exists in your body, your, my body. Um, and it's all that exists. And if I'm standing here like this person, I'm looking at this brain, I'm having experience. It's a sensory one, right? So information is coming to me or data is coming to me. Sense data is coming to me um, through my sense of sight. I, I process that sense data into information. And then I have what appears to be some sort of an experience of that information. But the experience doesn't seem to be one that you can see by looking at the brain. So what exactly is this thought? When we talk about having a mental event, according to the physicalist, what are they talking about? What's a mental state like anxiety? Like if you experience anxiety or desire, you know what those things, you know what those experiences are like. According to the physicalists, so all of this is confined to what's going on in your brain. Okay, so what exactly is a mental state according to a physicalist? We could even broaden this out and say, the hell is consciousness, right? If the physicalists are right, the only thing that exists are physical things. I have this experience of consciousness. And according to the physicalists, that would have to be also a physical phenomenon. So think about what happens during brain surgeries, right? When typically when you have brain surgery, you don't get knocked out and you don't get a, you don't have to have any anesthesia on your brain because the brain doesn't have any nerve endings, but they keep you awake because they have to figure out where certain uh, parts of your brain are by stimulating them. So you can see this guy down here. I can't remember if this, I think this might've been in Brazil, maybe um, he's having brain surgery. Um, and while uh, in order to perform the surgery correctly, they had to have him play a guitar. Um, so the guy's like belting out music, playing guitar while they're operating on his brain because they can sense certain parts of his brain uh, being active as he plays the guitar. Now, according to the physicalist, everything that's happening in the brain that's associated with him playing the guitar, all of this is physical. And they would argue um, the proof that it's physical is that they can locate the areas of his brain that are associated with him performing these particular activities. One way a physicalist is going to answer our question about what is a thought, what is consciousness, uh, what is a mental state, is they're going to say, look, we have language and it gets a little slippery sometimes. We talk about mental states, we talk about mental events, but really th those are just kind of fuzzy ways of talking about brain states or brain events. These are identical, right? When we talk about mental states, uh, and brain states, we're talking about the same thing. And this is called identity theory, right? That, that these two states that we talk about are actually the same thing. They're identical. Mental states are brain states. And so 
when they would say something like this, when I feel outrage and moral indignation at the sight of images of Nazi death camps, my adrenal gland above my kidney is sending two cc's of noradrenaline to a group of resting neural cells in my brain which receive the noradrenaline as a negative ion charge, which in turn alters the potassium-sodium balance in the neural cells and causes the electrical levels in the neural cells to elevate from minus 70, I guess that's microvolts, to plus 50 microvolts. So the, the, an identity theorist is going to say, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to talk about things uh, like outrage and it's useful to use those kinds of terms, but in reality, there is no such thing as outrage. There's just this chemical electrical phenomenon taking place in your brain. And, and this is identical to what you're calling a mental event. You think you're having some sort of experience of something, and the thing you're actually having the experience of is your brain activity. Everything that's occurring in this thing you're calling consciousness, these thoughts you're having, these are all just different states that your brain is in. Okay, so identity theorists approach our problem of what is a thought, what is consciousness this way, by just simply saying, look, we have all these terms, we refer to things like love and desire and outrage and indignation um, and frustration and anger and anticipation. But they would say, those are just kind of uh, uh, layman's terms for what is really physical phenomenon taking place in your brain. And we'll let you use that kind of fuzzy language because nobody wants to talk about um, how many cc's of noradrenaline are getting sent to your brain. We won't be able to communicate with each other about our experiences. So we create these sort of shortcuts with words like outrage. Now there's another group of physicalists that say hooey to that. The illimitab, oh, I'm going to botch this, illimitabists. Oh, that's not bad. So illimitabism says this, look, Let's get precise here. Let's get real. Why use terminology to refer to things that don't actually exist? There are no mental states. There are only brain states. And so when you talk about people having certain kinds of experiences, um, you're, you're sort of masking reality when you use terms like outrage. Um, just cut to the chase, right? When I see images, when I have this experience of seeing images, I'm not going to reference the feeling I'm having. I'm just going to tell you what's happening in my brain. So you can see the only difference between this description and the last one is that um, we've cut out this idea of outrage. So the eliminativists are going to say, yes, you, you're having, you, you think you're having this kind of experience of something real, this thing called outrage. But it really, it's only real in the sense that there's real physical phenomenon going on in your brain. And outrage is sort of a lazy shortcut to refer to that physical reality. What's really happening is this. Something's going on in your brain. You can tell the eliminativists would be very fun to hang out with. Um, so this is, these are two ways that the physicalists are going to answer our question. Um, brain states are the only thing that exists. Mental states, if we're going to use that term, we're just talking about the equivalent of brain states. But there's no such thing as this thing you're calling consciousness. It's a purely physical phenomenon that is um, caused by the operating of your brain in the same way that you know a car produces exhaust. Your brain is producing this thing called consciousness. And you're having these experiences, you think, of things like outrage and anger. But those are really just shortcut layman's terms that we use to talk about the real reality um, of what's going on neurochemically. Um, and the identity theorists are going to be fine saying, well, yes, good, let's keep using this language, the shortcuts. Uh, it's an effective way for us to be able to communicate really efficiently with one another without all having to be neural scientists. Uh, and the eliminativists say, uh, forget that. Why talk about things that don't actually exist like mental states? Just talk about the brain states. 